Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. I've got Anthony here with Pedrades uh, up in, what, Helotus? Helotus, Texas. Helotus. He is today's Pity Party Sales by Five um, food sponsor. And uh, we've got some uh, quesadillas, some sausage, it's actually kielbasa. Yes, sir. And we've got this uh, dip here. It's a artichoke crab meat dip. It's going to be an adventure for me because I'm not really a seafood person. But I heard it's good. Like real good. Derek's getting all pimped out with the shades behind the camera. He's my Chris Mott today. Speaking of that, yeah, if you watch WLTV episode 724 at 3 minutes 16 seconds in the video, it's a little hard to hear, but I got a little props. What up, Gary V? Anyway, um, so we're going to talk about what you got here, and uh, let me do the wine real quick. Uh, today, we have kind of an honor of the fact that I've got a Texas uh, catering company restaurant. Uh, I went with the Mission San Antonio de Valero Sauvignon Blanc 2007. Uh, got this at HEB Plus for $10.99. I know I went big time when a 99 cents over budget, but uh, we're going to check this out here. And this is from the Fall Creek Vineyards uh, up in Tau, Texas. Uh, same, it's actually the parent company of the Twin Springs Vineyards uh, that I did the Texas Sweet Red a few weeks back. Um, thing about this is, I'm just going to read the back for you real quick. I don't know why I'm yelling. I got a little microphone here, courtesy of Nan. Um, got the daughters of daughters of Republic are dedicated to the preservation and maintenance of the Alamo and other cherished Texas institutions. Fall Creek Vineyards is releasing this wine to aid those efforts. A portion of the proceeds from the sales of this wine will go to the Daughters of the Republic of Texas, who in their own words will preserve the Alamo as, sac as a sacred memorial to the heroes who sacrificed themselves on the hallowed ground. So I figured why not? Let's, let's try the wine, another Texas wine, uh, it's for a good cause, and uh, let's hope I score it really well. So let's check it out. Okay, so um, I'm getting that kind of traditional cat pee from that you get from Sauvignon Blancs. It's okay. Yeah. Did, did you get that? I oh, okay. don't drink a lot of wine. <laughs> don't drink a lot of West Fine. Don't worry about it. You know, uh, tastes good. As long as it tastes good, that's all that matters. Honestly, it could be a hundred dollar bottle of wine, it could be a five dollar bottle of wine. It all that matters is it tastes good. Speaking of five dollar bottles of wine, that Alice White, and we had that for dinner, not for dinner, but with dinner last night. It was great stuff. So I also get some grass. So it's kind of it's kind of the traditional Sauvignon Blanc uh, bouquets. So you get that grass and a little bit of cat pee. So let's kind of check it out. Hmm. Oh, this is tasty. Um, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it. It's got some good acid. Um, you're getting uh, some good fruit out of it. Yeah, you get some good fruit out of it. Um, I would say kind of citrusy, but kind of maybe a little tropical fruit like. Um, this is great for ten ninety nine, and you know part of the proceeds are going to a charity. By the way, this is only for sale in Texas. So if you're outside the Texas market, you cannot buy it. Um, which that was the other reason I bought it because it's such as a it's a state only thing, and that might be. I'd have to ask the winery. Uh, that might be something to do with the fact that it's, it's charitable donations and there might be some liquor laws involved across state lines and blah, blah, blah. Who knows? Um, but I really should ask the winery uh, about that. Anyway, so um, I'm going to give it uh, I'm gonna give an 88. I think it's a solid wine. Uh, it's a good value. Uh, we had it chilled in the refrigerator, so it's, we're, we're drinking it like most people would be drinking their wine. Um, and... Uh, I really enjoy it. So now let's pour a little more. So we're going to do a little food and wine pairing. Anthony, let's uh, let's find out a little more about you and who you are and and Padrati's and all that. I'm I'm Anthony with Padrati's Northwind Ranch. Um, my dad is Louie. He's the owner. Um, he's been in the food business for about 35 years, and uh, we've had the venue. Padrati's Northwind Ranch is a venue. He's had that for about 15 years or so now. Um, what we are is we're uh, an event center slash venue. Uh, we do all kinds of private parties, weddings, ceremonies, receptions, company picnics, company parties, uh, holiday parties, um, team building events, um, anything and everything, pretty much private events we, we, we take on. Um, 
we do some weird stuff like food shows. We do some weird stuff like like wine stuff. We do right. We do all kinds of from, from any kind of private event you can think of. We we probably do it. Um, and you got this open house coming up too, right? Yeah, we got an open house coming up September the sixteenth, um, six to nine o'clock p.m. We're trying to do a Wednesday night, a nighttime deal, open to the public. Come on, we're gonna have free food, free drinks, uh, inter- a lot of entertainment. Um, he might even do a little bit. I of might, yeah, I might be there. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. I might, we'll see. see. My, but I'm really interested in like going there because uh, for me it's a great exposure. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm all about getting exposure, especially a, you know uh, what, on we, the cheap. We are. <laughs> we are as well. We are as well. So uh, pretty much anything you can think of, private event, um, we do it. Give us a call. We'll definitely take care of you. Uh, we great great service. Uh, one of the big things that we take care of is you come in as an event planner and we take care of everything from the top to the bottom and. Uh, you get to enjoy yourself that night instead of have to worry about all the little details that uh, goes along with with doing an event. I can tell you that um, as as me being somebody who's been in the restaurant industry, um, that's something that you want your event planners to not have to worry about when they walk in the door. They want to know that the manager, uh, like where, I, where I've worked in the past, the manager and duty who's responsible responsible for the party is going to make sure everything's executed perfectly, and all they have to do is just you know have a good time. They don't have to worry about. You know, um, is the food being replenished okay? Or are the guests having a good time? Is the venue good? They they want to walk in, um, and they shouldn't have to work hard. That's exactly right. that's that's our job. It's a it's a, <laughs> it's a detail oriented business, and, right? And that's that's what we're all about is taking care of all those details that, for to be honest with you, you know that a lot of people don't even think about. It, you know right. What I mean? And, uh, Trust me, yes. Yeah. So a lot of stuff. Um, for those of you who've never worked in the restaurant industry or have never been in a venue like uh, like Anthony's or anywhere that puts on really big events, um, there are so there's so much that goes on behind the scenes uh, in in what they call the back of the house. And uh, you know the front of the house is like being on stage. It's like being on, in a play and you're 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 fulfilling a role. And the back of the house is like being backstage. It's where all the magic happens. And you know there there are, there are plenty of times when out in front, things are calm, everything looks yeah. great, and it is chaos in the back. You know, you've got everyone yelling at each other. I mean, you know, that doesn't happen all the time, but it happens. I don't it know does. about your place, but it's happened in my place every it once does. in a while. You, you get, you know, things aren't meeting your standards, yeah. but, um, and the guest has no idea, and that's the purpose. They need to know that everything's smooth and seamless, and they had a great time, and, and as far as they're concerned, everything was perfect, even if, you know, you were pulling rapids out of your hat in the back to make things right. That's exactly you know, right. So if you run out of something you're not supposed to run out of. Um, now tell me, you got something coming up soon, uh, right before the open house, right? So yeah. let's talk about that. We're doing the, we did the second annual, we did the Eva Longoria Tony Parker uh, charity event. It's called the Eva's Heroes. Um, they do a big, big event. Uh, they do a golf tournament every year and they do the poker tournament. We've been fortunate enough to get the poker tournament two years in a row now. Um, what she does is, she, Eva's Heroes is, uh, is a, uh, a charity for autistic children. Eva Longoria has a sister that's actually autistic, so she made an organization called Eva's Heroes, and all the proceeds, everything like that, goes to her charity. Her uh, five-year goal, I think, is to make um, a house here in San Antonio to house about 25 to 35 kids uh, year-round that would uh, take care of some of these issues, and uh, they're doing a great job. They do so many events uh, a year outside of the poker tournament, golf tournament, to take these kids out to dances, bowling, stuff like that. That man, in, in reality, these kids would never have that opportunity to get out in the public and have a good time. And it's uh, such a great cause. Um, you can find more information at padrotis.com or even hero, evasheroes.org. Um, either one of those, you can get on there, check it out, and it's a really fun. It's a really fun event that night. Cool. I'll have those links uh, underneath the video, so um, so make sure you check those out. Uh, when when I found out who was doing the sponsoring, I went ahead and looked it up. I uh, looked at the site and uh, looked at uh, looked at their website, and it was wonderful. What I saw, uh, real excited about it, and. Uh, Check out. There's a little video that kind of talks about how they do what they do, um, and that was really great. I, and it's like about a three, four minute video, something like that. Yes, it's sir. it's it's a great it's a great little video to kind of give you an idea what you're going to get by by booking uh, an event there. Um, also, a little, little fun, I guess, a fun fact. Um, my parents told me that you guys got in the business originally with like uh, selling like like spicy nuts. 
Wow. Something, was, it, was it not you guys? Though? Maybe not us. Maybe okay, not us. all right. Yeah. See, they were a little confused. They, they heard the name. They're like, oh, they used to do blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. I knew something yeah. on the website about it. Yeah. All right, good. I just didn't want to go, yeah, and they were doing this. That's what I want to ask you. I meant to ask you before we started recording about it. Kind of a funny story. My dad's been in the food business, like I said, about 35 years. And uh, him and my mom got this opportunity to take over this place. And... Uh, didn't have much money and this and that and they took a big big risk to even get this this venue they went ahead and did it they put pretty much put everything out on the line um and and went ahead for it and now it's just turned over to be a, a really great investment really great story if you have the time later but um now i'm a son growing up i'm the only son only child and uh in the sales side of it right here too and uh, <laughs> and and loving it I'm, I'm loving every bit of it it's, it's a lot of fun you meet different people and, mm-hmm. and and have a lot of great connections and networking and stuff like that and uh have a lot of fun doing it cool all right let's delve into the food real quick all right so we've got the uh this is a cheese quesadilla right yes sir all right let's make sure that's all i had would you know what cheeses are in here it's uh four four types of cheeses uh I, the cheddar and the mozzarella and the and there's a little bit of cilantro okay for the flavor all right so and and, and the tortilla is really good too yeah really like this uh, i've been munching on this during the during the pity party here and um all the flavors are really good. I think this will probably pair the best with the wine. I'm a slow eater. All right, so immediately with the wine, the cilantro and the wine really like they complement each other. You you can get that little bit of little bit of oomph from the spiciness because um, you got the the little bit of sweetness interacting with the cilantro and then. As you're done with the, as you're done with the quesadilla, um, you, you're getting that rest. You're getting that residual sugar, that little bit of sweetness, and that fruit coming down at the and the back end of the palate. Um, I don't know what kind of wines you serve, but if somebody wants to know what wine to serve with this, a Sauvignon Blanc itself in general would be awesome. Uh, so now we're gonna do we're gonna do the the, the I don't want to call it the summer sausage. Do yeah, the sausage, um, and this is excellent stuff too. It should actually pair pretty well. It does okay. Um, the sausage is awesome. Um, I would probably actually pair the sausage with maybe a Pinot Noir or a Merlot. I wouldn't go as heavy as a Cabernet Sauvignon or a Syrah or a Zin. Um, you can get away with doing. You can get away with doing the Sauvignon Blanc. Um, Sauvignon Blanc is one of those great wines that can pair with a lot of different things. <clears throat> A lot of lighter foods. Uh, you definitely wouldn't be drinking this with a big porterhouse steak. Um, I actually was talking about that yesterday with the meeting. Uh-huh. The exact, the exact um, analogy there. But um, you know, it, it works. But definitely works much better with the quesadilla and um, uh, not really with with the sausage. Now I'm going to attempt this um, for you guys on camera because first of all, I don't like seafood. And I, mom will be impressed. <laughs> oh, they they will be actually when I get home I'll tell them about it. So this is an artichoke crab meat dip. dip. Yes sir. This oh. is not imitation crab meat. This is real crab meat. Yes sir. So here imitation crab meat isn't that like doesn't have that fishy taste. But I'm like uh, so we'll see. You might I, I may I may hate this. So we'll find out. Definitely not a fan of it. But but I can see how. People will like this because um, the artichoke is really good. But yeah, I'm getting that. Fishy. I'm definitely getting the fishy the taste. Fishy. Yeah, now I'm really getting it. But you know what? I'll pair it with the wine. Well, actually, I just use the wine to get the taste of my mouth, I guess. There you go. You know what? I can see how white wine can pair with seafood. This is the first time I've ever done that in my life. And the reason I really did this was I knew I probably wouldn't like it, but it's for me to expand my palate and um, also to prove to myself yet again I'm not really a fan of any type of seafood. Because um, I have people all the time go, how do you know? But, but I've tried it. Yeah. And I've tried it lots of times. It wasn't just when I was a little kid. I mean, as an adult, I've tried it too. But um, I think it's good. It's just that I'm not a fan of, of it. But 
I can see how everyone was everyone's been digging into this here at the party. They've been loving it. They've been raving about it, and I and I can totally see why. And um, you pair it with this wine. I think actually I think it's a better pairing with the wine than, than the quesadilla. It's awesome stuff. Um, I really I really appreciate you uh, you coming on with me. Oh yeah. And. Uh, it uh, gives me an opportunity to have, have more guests on the show. Um, and uh, we got the pity party here. We've got sales by five. We've got Pedrati's. Uh, we just signed them up to Twitter today. Today. Today is this Friday. So uh, by, by the time the episode shows up on Monday, uh, he should be already good to go with his profile. Make sure you follow him, follow Pedrati's. Um, you got me. I'm 1337 Wine. Make sure you click all the links on the side for all my uh, for all my social networking stuff. Um, if you want to be a donator, I've got the uh, I've got the PayPal stuff kind of a little bit farther down the side there. Uh, do that. Uh, <clears throat> also, I write an article every week for IGO SA. Um, hopefully by tonight, or by the time we finish this thing, or sometime over the weekend, my next article should be posted. It was about the Ramblin' Rosé. Um, event last Saturday up at Becker Vineyards. Um, it's, I think a really good article on how everything went. So make sure you check that out. I'll put the link to the to the uh, site down below. And then um, what else did I want to make sure I talk about that's all 1337. Oh, I also, um, for those of you that may want to know what equipment I use, um, I did a little, uh, little not blog post, but I did a little thing on the pe web page under about 1337. There's a little menu item now, so you have an about me, or about 1337. You also have the tech behind 1337. Um, since it's cool, I'm using another camera. This is the camera I normally use, the flip, but this camera, uh, from what I've already heard about it and what we're about to see, um, I'm already lusting after it. The fact that I can have a microphone or even do a do a um, do a wireless for some of the stuff that we're planning that will be tremendously much better than trying to do it with this. Um, and then the fact that it's image stabilization. Uh, I love this flip, but this uh, was a Kodak Zi8. It's a review unit uh, that uh, my good buddy Derek uh, has offered to uh, let me use today. So uh, kudos to that. And uh, just remember, I'm, I'm the future competition. You know, I don't really look at myself as really competition for 13th, um, for, uh, for uh, Wine Library. I mean, like I put in my, my post uh, on the comments, you've got a lot of us out here that are doing wine reviews. You've got the Naked Wine Show, Three Wine Guys. Um, who else did I mention? Um, Denver Wine Guys, uh, my friends on Vidler. Um, you've, got, you've got all of us doing video stuff. You've got uh, Wine for Newbies, an audio podcast. You know, we've got a, it's a, it's a big market out there. We all have our certain styles, and we also have our target groups that we're going after. And um, I think we all do excellent jobs. Um, I don't watch every single episode of all the other guys, but I know I watch all the Wine Library ones because that's why one of the things I started. And I've listened to every Wine for Newbie episode. So, um, and they've been like my cornerstone for, for a lot of my education. But, um, you know, We've got a big, it's a big pine, big pond. We've got a lot of stuff in there, and I totally respect everybody and what they do. And uh, they've got some great video content. You should check them out. Uh, pro provide some links to everyone else's show down below, because it's all about mutual stuff, and you know we all help each other out. Yeah, Gary Vaynerchuk's the big, the big grill in the room. He's he's the guy that drives a lot of stuff. But uh, you know he started out just like me, kind of. Uh, he started out small, didn't have many viewers, and he grew it out to a lot after three years. So thanks for stopping in, and uh, we'll see you again next time.